On today's show, we're going to talk about septic systems. The motto of my business is to build your dream. And I'm super excited about this because this septic system that I'm putting in is for my sister and brother-in-law on a piece of property they bought. This will be the future site of a post frame building. But while they save up some money, they decided to buy a mobile home and move out and start establishing their homestead. I'm gonna to explain to you the ins and outs of a gravity-fed septic system, and it'll be followed up by a full time lapse of the install. So before you're able to do um, a septic system here, you have to have a perk test. A perk test is where they come out and do soil borings to see what kind of soil you have and see if it will be suitable for a conventional septic system. We had that done and they came back with the soil type and then they actually give you, provide you a report with all the requirements of the septic systems. That costs $400 to get that done here in this area. And once you have that done, you take that to the county and you can pull a septic permit. And then you have to abide by uh, the perk test recommendations for the system. It's a three bedroom. So it requires a 1250 gallon dual compartment septic tank. It has to have 400 linear feet of field lines. They have to be 26 to 36 inches deep, no more than 100 feet in length max. So that means four lines, 100 feet long. Um, there has to be a curtain drain put on the top side of this system that basically keeps water out of your leach field. But now that we got the basis done, let's start. This is the beginning right here where you connect to the house. So we got four inch, I use four inch schedule 40 solid core pipe from the house. Once you get it, you know, a couple feet outside the house, you have to have a clean out that's code. And then you have to have one every, I believe it's 75 or 100 feet. I didn't have to worry about that because I'm only 30 feet to the tank. We got our clean out. And then from there, we go to the septic tank, which is right there. And there is a quarter inch per foot drop from the house to the tank. This is solid core pipe. Comes into the tank the first compartment of the tank, and then there's a T. And what this T does is there's an eight inch drop, which is required here. This T allows everything to go down into the uh, liquid here in the tank. All the solids will settle to the bottom. All the scum and some of the paper will come to the top. And then from there, the liquids will transfer over to the second compartment. which you can see the holes there, they're about two thirds of the way up and then the liquids will come over here and the same process will happen. So if anything happened to get over here, any solids, they'll settle to the bottom, any scum will come to the top. And then here is your outlet tee, which has a filter on it, which needs to be cleaned once a year. You just gotta pull it out, wash it off, it's kind of gross, but it keeps uh, your septic lines healthier. So you can see the T goes down. So it'll pull, it only allows liquid. It won't let the scum come off the top and go down this pipe and it won't let solids. So the liquid's coming up into that pipe and then going out right here. Out of the tank, we ran Schedule 40 solid core. And after, after the tank, you can get away with less uh, drop. Now I have plenty of drop here, just the way this land land lays. It's kind of slopes off pretty good. Schedule 40 solid core runs to the distribution box. So this is a seven port distribution box. Your inlet's gonna be a little bit higher. Again, you have to have a T. So when that water or that liquid comes down, it can't just land in here and ripple the water. It comes in here hits that T, goes down, and then this water equally comes up and you have these levelers on each line so you can 
distribute the water equally to all four lines. I have these capped because they don't, uh, obviously we don't need them. So we have four lines going out. They all have balancers on them. So once we get water ran to this place, we'll put water in here and adjust these all so they're evenly distributing water to the lines. Now my D-box is set on a bed of rock and then I put rock up around it and then I will actually, after inspection, which is here this morning, um, I'll put some dry bags of concrete just around over these pipes and around this box just to keep it um, nice and solid and secure. So then from the distribution box, the liquid is gonna go evenly into four lines. Um, two of them go down. That's the farthest line. That's the second to farthest line away. And then these two come off and go to their own line. So you just have to have a nice drop here, which I have more than enough drop to these lines. And then once you get to the beginning of the line, this has to be supported. So if there's any gap, I put rock under it. All right guys, so this comes right into this chamber system. This chamber system is the infiltrator low pros they're 36 inches wide um, these are 100 foot runs and then i always like to put a uh, viewing port these are not required by code or anything like that the inspector's left she doesn't require they don't require these but i like to put them in i just leave them stick up quite a ways until we get it all filled in it settles and then they get cut off and then the plug sits just flush with the ground so if you ever need to view in there or run a camera or for whatever reason I mainly put them in there for curiosity so you can see how much water is in there to see if they're even evenly um, getting water, if they're holding water, stuff like that. These are 100 foot runs. My requirements were the bottom of the trench had to be 20, I think it was either 24 or 26 to 36 inches deep. As I ran these lines, we used a laser level to make sure we were plus or minus an inch the whole way down. Alright guys, we got this curtain drain all dug out and basically what it is, there will be a perforated tile that runs the length of this ditch that I dug. This is five foot deep. I have a natural drop so I just kept it at five feet and the land just slopes off here so that works perfect. It has to be ten feet above the last line which it is. And then once we hit this corner, this it's only required on the top side. Once we hit this corner, it just gradually comes up till it pops out down there. So the water, any groundwater that comes through headed this way will hit this rock, go to the bottom, get in the tile, and work its way out down there. All right, so to get started, the first thing you have to have to have a conventional, conventional septic system is slope. You have to have enough drop that your septic lines coming from your house can drop a quarter inch per foot to your septic tank. Now that's going to vary depending on where you're at in this country. That's what is required here where we are located. So the first step for me was to come out here, shoot grade, I use a transit, even though I could look at this and visually see that I would have enough slope. All right, so it's about 95 degrees and it's really humid out here, of course. We got our hole dug. I got it close. And then one, what I do is I put some rock in the bottom and then just get it perfectly level. So my tank is 64 inches wide and this is dug out where there's eight to 12 inches extra room on both sides. And then it's 157 inches long. And again, I have eight to 12 inches on each end of the tank. So I have plenty of room to maneuver the tank um, however I need to. So I'm just adding a little rock. I started my grade here, just using my transit level. And I'm about right there. I gotta add a little rock back down in there and then we'll get this all tamped and check it again. So just a, a process that I like to do. I like to get it absolutely perfect. So when I set that tank in there and uh, hit hit it with the the level, it's perfect. All 
All right, so you can see I lined, I just roughly laid my pipe out. I stuck a pipe into the tank, the inlet, brought it out, eyed up the 45, laid my pipe out in a line, laid out my fittings here. And then what I did here, since this isn't that far, um, you definitely don't want to over dig. Um, you want to be on undisturbed soil. Um, so I just broke the sod out and um, I have a pickaxe and a trench shovel. So I'm going to try to just, I'm going to go shoot my grade down there, figure out how much drop I need. So it's 25 feet or it's 20, I think it's 20 feet. I'll have to measure again, but I think it's 20 feet from there to here. So I just got to figure out how much of drop I need. It's a quarter inch per foot drop. So if that was the case, I would need five inches of drop. So I will find out where I need to be there and then make sure I'm five inches higher here. And then we will get this all cleaned out so that pipe sits in there nice um, on undisturbed soil. And then we'll start hooking, we'll get it all dry fitted and then we'll start hooking up from here and then work our way towards the tank since I can slide that pipe into the tank and bring it back.
All right, guys, I got this curtain drain all done. Now all I gotta do is put some, um, a barrier down between the rock and the dirt so the dirt over time can't seep down into that rock and clog it up. Even though I never think, I don't think it would ever do that. Um, it would take a long, long time. I'm gonna go ahead and do that anyway. We're gonna get the dirt pushed back in and then this is going to be complete. The whole septic system will be complete. It's been approved. We're good to go. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. I wanna help those people who are wanting to kind of do some things on their own. Um, I believe that you should be able to. And uh, hopefully this video is helpful to you if you're thinking about doing your own septic. Like I said before, I'm located in Southern Iowa. So make sure you check with your inspector and uh, see what their requirements are because every inspector is a little bit different. I have found it very useful over the years to just give them a call if you're not familiar with working with them and just ask them you know, what they're looking for, you know, what they want to see when they come for an inspection. Do they want everything open? Do they... By calling them, you're just, you know, you're being professional and you're showing that you want to make sure it's done right. So. There's a lot of money just in materials that goes into a septic system, so you don't want to screw it up and have to redo it. So if you screw this up, they can actually make you move the location of the septic. Make sure you do it right the first time. And this is not something you want to do over the course of a month. This needs to be done in a timely fashion. In a week, get it done, get the inspection, get it covered up. You don't want water on this if you don't have to. And if it gets enough water, they can also fail the inspection for that too and make you move it. Again, we appreciate you guys watching and we will catch you on the next video.